right, you have some more practice with combining length terms up at the top of this sheet here. And I'm going to do a few problems with you up here, and then we will move on to the bottom, which is just a little bit more of a review. So when we're simplifying, remember, we want to combine as many terms as we can that are alike. And it looks like in these first problems here, they're all the same term. So we just have to work on combining them. So 5x and 3x are on the same level. They're the same type of term, so I can combine them. So what I do is I add my two outside numbers, or my two coefficients, together and create a new coefficient with the answer to that. So I know in general, 5 plus 3 is 8. So that's going to be my new number outside. And then because they're on the x term, or the level of x, I need to put x with it. So I now, when I combine 5x and 3x, I'm left with 8x. Number two, 2x plus x. Remember, when we have just the variable by itself, we don't have any number out front, that is considered to be one of that variable. We never write the number one out front as a coefficient or as the number out front of a variable just because it's, I don't know, it's just the way that math has decided that it's just easier to include just the variable instead of the number out front. So this is 1x and that's 2x. So because they're on the same level, we can combine them and we end up getting 3x as our total. I'm going to move down to problem number 11 with you here. So we have 18x and 3x and 9. 18x and 3x are both combinable. We can combine those. So we would add the two numbers out front. 18 plus 3 is 21. Bring down our x. And then that means that we've kind of combined or covered that part of the problem, and we're left with plus 9. Nothing else can be combined with that 9, so our answer would be 21x plus 9. Okay, so that should be a review. I'm going to have you do the rest of these problems as your assignment today. Down here, factoring. Remember, that was what we worked on with the distributive property. We distributed these um, terms on the outside of parentheses, and then we spent a little bit of time kind of working backwards from that distributive property. When we were factoring, we found the GCF, or the greatest common factor of the two numbers that were given to us in the problem, and we pulled that outside of the set of parentheses. So the GCF of 21 and 15, I know that 3 can go into both of those. So when I'm pulling my number out of those, or factoring my GCF out of there, I'm dividing by that number, that GCF. And that GCF now gets pulled outside the parentheses. So when I divide 21x by 3, I know that 3 times 7 is 21, so I'm left with 7x. My symbol stays the same. And now I have a different variable, but that, that doesn't matter for this case. It may seem tricky because it's not an x and it's a y, but we would still do it the same process that we did this year. So 15y divided by 3, I know when I divide 15 by 3, I get 5, and I'm going to attach that y to it. Close my parentheses, and that would be my answer. So remember, you can use a distributive property once you think you found your answer to double check. 3 times 7x is 21x. 3 times 5y is 15y, and that would be your answer. Okay, I'll do one more with you, number 16. 12x plus 18y. Well, the GCF of that, I know 6 can go into both of those, and that's the highest number that can go into both 12 and 18. So I'm going to pull 6 out from each one of those, which means I'm dividing each term by 6. So 12x divided by 6 is 2x. Bring down my symbol. 18y divided by 6. 18 divided by 6 is 3. Attach my y, and I've simplified or factored that expression. Again, you can use your distributive property arrows to double check. 6 times 2x is 12x. 6 times 3y is 18y, and that would be your answer. Okay, so I will attach a picture of this assignment if you didn't get a paper copy of this. Otherwise, you are completing the rest of the problems on here for your homework today. Let me know if you have any questions.